Hey folks, it's Mangrel. We just received our pre-order of the iFlight Alpha A75 HD with the Cadex Vista. So let's take a quick look and see what we get and first thoughts here. iFlight's done a great job of giving us all the necessary cables and accessories. So we have two USB cables. The first one is a micro USB for the flight controller and the other one is a USB type C for the Cadex Vista. So we got both of those cables. iFlight also provided us with an extra set of propellers. These are the Gemfan 40 millimeter, comes in this uh, light blue color. And at the same time, we purchased an extra set of the HQ props. So these are four blades, the gem fans are three. So it seems to fly very similar. Maybe these have a little bit less noise. iFlight also included a bag of accessories. So we have some extra screws, nuts, battery pad, extra strap, camera lens cover, along with a USB a riser, which takes the USB uh, micro and makes it a little bit longer, which really wasn't required, but still, thanks to them for including that. Now let's take a quick look at what you get with the kit here. So this comes pre-assembled, and as you can see, it's been fairly well thought out. All the solder points are very nicely done. The wire management is, is great. You can see over here, the motor cables have you know, no excess cabling. So definitely this is a high quality build. So they've done a very, very good job here. And then the motors are the Zing motors. They're 1103, 3000 KV. Oh, our batteries are charged. So the motors are the Zing E, 1103, 3000 KV. So very, very tiny motors. It comes with the Cadex uh, Nebula Nano, so that's the 14 by 14 camera. And a couple of things to bear in mind, the quality of this is not as good as the DJI camera um, or the Nebula Pro. So hopefully sometime in the future, they'll re release a Nebula Pro Nano that we can replace this with. But this is designed for 14 millimeters. Now we can see here that uh, the Vista is mounted on top of the stack and it's a single stack, which typically you find in a whip anyway. And when we look at the bottom, we can see this is where the cable comes out for our flight controller. So it's very, very easily accessible, no issues there. Um, and then the other thing to bear in mind is this has a lot of flex to it, which, which is perfect because given its size, you're most likely flying this indoors. And as you hit walls and things, it'll prevent damage to the wall. And that's something that we've, we've definitely tested many, many times. So a couple of things that I think they could do better maybe in a subsequent version here. There's a lot of empty space between the Vista and the canopy top, so all this empty space. They could have lowered this a little bit. Um, likewise, there's still a lot of space between the board and the Vista. They've probably done that more for uh, cooling, but again, that's all valuable space. So we could make the footprint even smaller. We can give it better uh, center of gravity. But I think other than that, it's a, it's a very nice build. They've done a great job of putting this together. And I think for a indoor whoop that it keeps you busy winter time and during the COVID lockdown, it's, it's perfect for those kind of things. Now, as I mentioned, this came pre-assembled and ready to go. So all we had to do was update the firmware on the Vista and activate the Vista. 
Then we checked our flight controller software to see what was going on there. After we updated our Vista, next thing we did was we connected the flight controller to the computer to see what was going on and how it was configured. And for the most part, everything worked well. So as we tilted the quad, everything was going in the right direction. All the port configurations were all good. It was set up for D-Shot 300, 8K, 4K, no bi-directional D-Shot. This speed controller is a BL Heli S, which natively does not support bi-directional. We will upgrade it later on to turn this feature on. So another thing to bear in mind is that the motor pattern is reversed. It's a props out versus a props in. They give you a nice little diagram that shows you how the propeller should spin given this change. We did have to change our max cell voltage. It was set to 4.4. We had to change it to 4.2. The pit tuning was already set up and it seems to work fairly well given a couple of flights here indoor. Now the rate profile is a different story. It was set up with a really crazy high number of degrees per second. I believe it was about 2000. So that's been updated to match better with our other quads. And that's typically what you do on a new quad anyway. So nothing too outrageous there. And then the final piece that we changed was we set our buttons, our, our switches as uh, we expect. And a lot of these were easily done through the CLI. So all we did was we went into the CLI and then we grabbed a dump from our existing quad. So this is our three inch quad here. And within that dump, you can see here you've got all your switches. So all you have to do is you copy that into here, press enter, and now that configuration is complete. And then very similarly, you can do exact same thing with your, with your rates. So you come down to rate profile zero, just copy that over, paste it in, type and save. Now at this point, it'll restart your flight controller. When we reconnect, you should see that your modes are as you expect. You should see that your rate profile is as you expect. So that's the easiest way to set it up. Okay, so let's see how much it weighs. Right now it's got the battery pad, it's got the battery strap ready to fly, except for the battery. Okay, so it's 69 grams and we could probably save about 10 grams or so once we decase our Cadex Vista, which we will do in a subsequent video. And for the battery, we're using a Tattoo 450 milliamp three cell. And once we add the battery, we're looking at about 109 grams. So that's, that's a fair bit of weight. So we'll see what we can do to reduce that. Uh, right now it, it hovers at roughly half stick, which you know, is kind of excessive, but we'll see what we can do once we reduce the weight. Now, unfortunately I don't have any flight footage, but it flies fairly nice for, for its size. But just bear in mind, even though it's quite light, it can still do damage around the house. So just bear that in mind if you're planning to use this winter time indoors. And what we're going to do as a follow-up to this, we're going to do a decased uh, Vista. So we're going to remove the case here and that should save us probably around 10 grams of weight. And that's what Beta FPV does with their quads. So we'll go ahead and do that. At the same time, we're going to try to make this canopy a little bit shorter. So probably cut a little bit at the bottom here and make it shorter. And finally, like I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and try to update our software on the speed controller to turn on bi-directional D-Shot. So make sure to stay tuned for that. So hit that subscribe button for those videos to come up.